Hey, let's talk about DevOps. I've been using both the DevOps and GitOps model in both my home lab and professional life as a software developer. No, YouTube isn't my main job. This model has helped me move fast and try not to break things. It's allowed me to write code, build it, test it, release it, and deploy it as soon as it's ready, and then operationalize it with monitoring and logging. This has increased my velocity to deploy code, services, and infrastructure quicker than ever. And since it's all based on Git workflow, this means applications and infrastructure are version controlled, run in CI-CD pipelines, tested, stored in a container registry, and then deployed to my Kubernetes infrastructure, which up until this point was a traditional push model. This means every time I check in code, my CI runs, it builds a container, pushes that container to a registry, and then pushes those changes to Kubernetes. This works great with the exception of one thing. It's that I need to either make my cluster public with security, obviously, or create ways to securely remote into my cluster to make these changes. So really, it's just automating kube control commands in CI to set my cluster to a desired state. The other downside is that every single code repo I have needs to duplicate this CI step. And when you have lots of apps, that can add up. So I started to look for alternate ways to deploy apps and infrastructure to my Kubernetes cluster. And that's when I found Flux. Flux CD is an open source GitOps solution that helps you deliver both infrastructure and applications to your Kubernetes cluster. It runs within your cluster and it can deploy and manage any Kubernetes resource. It enables continuous delivery for applications and all you need to do is push to Git and Flux does the rest. Flux fits into your existing workflow and works with Git providers like GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, and all major container registries and all CI workflow platforms like GitLab, GitHub Actions, Jenkins, Drone, and more. And you can deploy applications using Kubernetes manifests, Helm charts, or even monitoring a container registry for changes. So it's flexible enough to fit into your existing development process. It's designed with security in mind and is configured with the least amount of privileges and has tight integration with security tools and best practices. And one of my favorite features is that it can use a pull model instead of a push. In the pull model, you can monitor any repo anywhere and apply changes to your cluster as changes are made without the need to expose your cluster to the internet or do any fancy networking during CI. It can also notify you using chat systems like Slack, Microsoft Teams, Discord, Google, so you get alerts and notification when Flux makes changes. And for something that is seemingly complex, it's actually quite easy to install and configure. Flux has a CLI tool that you'll need to install on your own system so we can install Flux and use it later to debug and troubleshoot. Then you'll need to make sure you can communicate with your Kubernetes cluster using a simple command like kubectl get nodes. This should return the nodes in your cluster. If you need help setting up a Kubernetes cluster, I've created a video that helps you spin up an HA Kubernetes cluster in about 60 seconds using Ansible and comes with everything you need for a high availability cluster at home in your home lab. But once you have Flux CLI installed, you'll want to run a Flux pre-check to check your cluster to be sure it meets the requirements. Once the checks pass, we can install Flux on our cluster. Since we are working with a Git-based flow, we'll need to create a Git repo, and Flux can do that for us if we provide a token. I'm doing all of this in GitHub, so I'll need to grab a token from there that has repo access. I want to keep this somewhere safe though, it's a secret, and we definitely don't want to commit this to our repo. Once we have our token, we'll need to bootstrap our cluster with Flux. We'll run a command that will create a repo, install some additional components that are needed for monitoring container registries, set our branch, and create a path for our cluster. Once these components have been installed on our cluster, we can check with the command, and we should see our Flux pods running. We should see a few pods, one for each service that Flux is going to run, and we'll touch on this in a little bit. Now that we have Flux running, we should clone the repo it created so we can start deploying our applications. This repo represents your Kubernetes cluster. We can see we have our cluster folder and our Flux system folder. Clusters is empty because we haven't deployed anything yet, and Flux system is where we'll see Flux itself committed to Git. <laughs> this is so awesome. There are so many ways to structure your repo. However, the mono repo approach is what we're going to follow, but this is just a suggestion. There are many ways to do this. In a mono repo, we have all of our resources in one repository and organized by folders. I'm going to nest mine according to namespace and then by app, but feel free to organize this according to your environment, your team, or really any way that you like. So once we've made the tough decision of how we're going to organize things, 
we'll need to decide on how we're going to deploy our applications. We're going to cover deploying applications three different ways, using Kubernetes manifest, using Helm charts, and monitoring container registries for changes. First is deploying using Kubernetes manifests. This is the simplest approach because it's taking something we may have been doing already with kube control, either on your workstation or in CI, and letting Flux do this for you. This can be as simple as creating a standard Kubernetes deployment file, adding it to a folder, and then committing it and pushing it up to your Git repo. And you're done. Seriously, that's it. After pushing it up, we can watch Flux with a command and see that it reconciles our cluster and applies the deployment. If we check our cluster, we can see the deployment, and if we make a change and push it up and wait for a minute, it will apply it to our cluster. And if we add an additional service and push it up, it will deploy that too. I feel like this method of deploying applications is going to be the easiest for anyone transitioning to Flux or any kind of CD system because it's applying manifests that you may already have. So awesome, so awesome. And if you're wondering what the UI is that I'm using, it's Lens. It's a super nice way to look at your clusters from your desktop. It doesn't require anything to be installed in your cluster, and it uses a standard kube config file and nothing else. You can use this, Kubernetes dashboard, or even just kube control to get the same information. Anyway, next up is Helm deployments. Helm is a package manager for Kubernetes that helps you manage applications. Helm charts help you define, install, and upgrade applications. They even have an artifact hub to help you find Kubernetes applications that have already been packaged with Helm. Traditionally, you would install a Helm chart using a Helm command on your local machine and push those changes up to your cluster. And it's great for getting things installed and running, but not great for repeatability. The good news is, is that Flux also supports Helm deployments. Flux allows you to write your Helm releases declaratively using a manifest just like we did for our Kubernetes manifest deployment. To do this, we just need to add a Helm repository that points to our chart's location. We name it and tell it how often to check the repository for newer versions. Once that's created, we then create a Helm release to release the Helm chart. After committing and pushing this up, Flux will check the Helm repo and install our application. We can then make changes to this release, commit and push it up, and Flux will make the changes to our cluster. And if we need to customize this chart with values, we can add those values to our deployment. This is so awesome. Don't get me wrong, Helm is awesome, but it's challenging to manage Helm charts via CLI along with passing in values. You end up with partial CLI commands and a manifest, and it's such a pain to manage, but not anymore with Flux. The next type of deployment is one that automatically deploys your containers when new container images are available. This is something that is the responsibility of your CD step in the push model. However, not with Flux in a pull model. In this type of deployment, we'll monitor our container registry for changes and apply those changes to our cluster when we see a new container tag. First, we'll create a basic deployment. We'll want to commit and push to deploy this, and then we'll want to make sure it's running. Then we'll configure image scanning to tell Flux which container registry to scan for new tags. Flux provides commands we can use to generate the manifest. Otherwise, you can copy them or create them yourself. If you have container registry secrets, you can store them using sealed secrets, which encrypts your secrets so you can safely commit them even to a public repo. But that's a different topic for a different day. We'll then create an image poll policy that tells Flux which semantic version range to use when filtering tags. Then we'll commit and push our changes up. After Flux reconciles, we can then fetch the tag list for the container registry and find which tags are within range. After this, we need to configure the image updates. We edit this markup to tell Flux which policy to use. It's just a comment, but it's pretty important. Then we create an automation for this to tell Flux which Git repo to write these image updates to. We commit and push that up, and within a few seconds, Flux will push and commit to our Git repository with the latest image tag that matches our policy. And it will apply that commit, and we will see our image and our deployment is up to date. This is so awesome. Now we can monitor container registries for changes and automatically update the containers when they do change. Now I typically use this for custom images, ones that I build during CI, but it can be used for any container image, private, custom, or public. Once we have this working, we should probably set up notifications to let us know when Flux does something. Flux supports many different chat providers like Slack, Microsoft Teams, Google, or even Discord, and configuring them is easier than ever. 
First, we'll need to grab a webhook from your chat provider, and then we'll need to create a Kubernetes secret since the webhook is not something that should be shared, unless you want random people posting to your Slack or Discord channel. Once we create a secret in Kubernetes, we'll then create a notification provider for this chat provider that connects our secrets to this provider and specifies which chat channel to use. We'll then create an alert to let us know if anything's changed. After creating this alert, specifying our provider, the event severity, and event sources, we can push it up and shortly after, we'll see our alerts. This is so awesome, so awesome. Sorry, I keep saying awesome, but it is awesome. Automation is awesome. Now that we have our cluster up, a GitOps workflow to deploy our applications and infrastructure, and notifications letting us know what is happening, really, the sky is the limit. Automating our application delivery with Flux is easier than ever, and it allows us to move at a really high velocity, something that's essential in this day and age. And Flux has so many more features that we didn't even talk about that I'd love to cover in future videos. And Flux isn't the only player in this space. There are other tools and technologies that help you deliver your services just as fast. If you'd like to see any other ones, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know what you'd like to see. And remember, if you found anything in this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. This happens to me. It happened to me earlier this week, and, and, and it comes in waves. comes in waves. It happened to me, you know, two days ago. It happened to me last night. It happened to me, you know, a week ago, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. It happens to me all the time. So you're, you're not alone. It does happen. Um, and you just, you have to mentally um, uh, um, coach yourself, I think, to say that, you know, hey, I can do this. I can figure it out um, and I'm good enough. I mean, uh, seriously, I mean, you just have to do that sometimes. I mean, there's a, yeah, it's, it's, it's powerful what uh, positive thinking can do.